Greetings, unsettled souls, and a welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange reporting for the Media Speaks, uh, staring blankly into the low def while the high def syncs up. Uh, so in case you saw me doing uh, my best Bill Clinton impersonation. Friends, welcome to The Correct Views. We have news on all fronts. And there are two things you can do about this. You can either whine and complain about it, or you can actually do something. Me, I suggest doing both. Um... Call your rep today, vote no on military aid to Syrian rebels. The people that Obama wants to fund and send money to are a group of Islamic militants who also are joining in with the people that he is trying to fight against. In other words, he's funding a very large portion of the enemy. So what can you do? You know who ISIS is. We talk about it all the time. If you're, new, if you're new to politics and this is your first day, ISIS sucks, okay? So what do we do? I, I'm not against. I left a message uh, saying I was not against um, uh, aid in the form of you know, health care, uh, making sure that the people ISIS has displaced aren't starving to death on a mountain. I've got no problem with that, okay? We don't need to go in there making the situation worse. I agree with Rand Paul. The only reason we had to do anything now is because the government did so much that it shouldn't have done before. So call your representative now at 202-224-3121. That's the only number you need. 202-224-3121. When you speak to a staffer or leave a message, you can use the talking points below. Again, you're a constituent from wherever, wherever. You're wanting them to vote no on military aid to Syria. We do not want to arm our enemies. You can, you're can, you smart enough to leave your own message. That's the number. All right, guys, I'm going to go on. I want to talk a little bit quickly about, uh, and I've done so much ISIS. I just wanted to give you that information. The NFL is never really in line with what most Americans believe and it's been this way, uh, look up my Bob Costas was right video. It's been this way for a minute. And one of the things that I haven't liked in the NFL at all is this idea that you can fire a player before he has seen his day in court or before he's even been arrested. Um, case in point, uh, Ben Roethlisberger, um, he did not do what he was... Uh, people were saying he did. He got suspended from the NFL. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. His numbers went down because he missed a series of games for something that he ended up being innocent for. And, uh, you know, I, I don't spend hours and eons of my life watching football. I do like it to some degree. But if you don't like it, you might be asking yourself, why should I listen to this segment of the show? Maybe I should just scan ahead. It matters because if the slightest accusation can lead to someone losing their job before they've been arrested, charged, or even, you know, even seen any legitimate, other, other than finger-pointing accusations, then they can do it to you and I. We're still talking about Americans. Second of all, the NFL has become so politically correct as to be nauseating. And I'm going to go over a little bit of this here because they've also been very uh, anti-Christian as well lately. It says, The NFL has become a circus of political correctness by Michael Snyder, the end of the American dream. Do you remember when the NFL actually used to be about football? The NFL has become a reflection of society at large and it has been disgusting to watch the transformation take place. Um, and it goes on talking about Rice, Peterson, and Hardy. We all know the, you know, the child abuser, the... the wife beater, fiance beater, whatever, I got you. But it says, now we're being told by some sports journalists that we should feel bad for liking football because of the actions of a few bad apples. For example, Peter King's latest article, Should We Still Like Football? So they're telling you what to like, what to think. And again, if you're watching this and you don't care about football, it's, it's much bigger than the game of football. It's about the way the NFL is dragging America by its leash and making us capitulate by making us think that everybody's already anti-Second Amendment, just like they are. Everybody thinks, oh, you should be able to, uh, you know, fire somebody for smoking pot in the state where it's legal. Well, no, we don't. We don't all think that. 
Should we still like football? I've asked myself that a few times over the past week, week, writes King. I think we all have. And now that I've come to think of it is this. It's a personal decision. I can't tell you I can't tell you to feel better about the gutter the NFL has fallen into or to spend your money on one more NFL jersey or hat or red zone channel whatever whatever. Is it is he kidding us? I don't know about you, but I'm not going to give up my passion for a game that I've loved since I was a child because some guy decided to hit his wife. There we go, the voice of common sense. The players are not the game. Rather, the Truth is, the game is far, far larger than the players, or at least it's supposed to be. You've got Senator Kristen Gilbrand wanting to have hearings on the NFL over the Ray Rice case. The government has absolutely no business holding hearings on anything that the National Football League does. This is your tax dollars. You pay taxes, great, so do I. And that's what this BS is going to if they do this. Because some bonehead hit his wife, that is absolutely ridiculous. That's between the courts, him and her. It says, um, this is even another example. NFL recently banned advertisements for Slap Ya Mama Cajun products. The NFL is forcing Cox Sports Television to cancel part of its advertising deal with the Cajun food product Slap Ya Mama due to the domestic violence suits that it's been facing. Well, Slap Your Mama is... Uh, it's a, it's a compliment. Here we go. According to Jack D. Walker, vice president for marketing and, of Walker and Sons, who makes Slap Ya Mama, says that Slap Ya Mama refers to the loving slap on the back and a kiss on the cheek one would give their mother as a thank you for preparing a great meal. That is not just a cop out. If you look the company up, they have no girl beating shirts, no mama beating shirts. Nope. It's explained. To, are you, you need to. A minimal bit of research will prove that it's right. This is what really gets me. And this is why I'm sure a lot of you are still listening. Robert Griffin III attended a press conference discussing Sunday's school football game where the Redskins quarterback, I hope they get to keep their name, appeared to have turned his Jesus-themed shirt inside out. Ahead of the press conference about the ankle injury that he sustained during Sunday's match against the Jacksonville Jags, RG3 donned a blue t-shirt that read, No Jesus, No Peace, as in, No Jesus, No Peace. No K-N-O-W, Jesus, No Think Peace. However, once the press event was underway, the NFL star shirt was turned inside out so that the Christian message was unreadable. One reporter for the Washington Post even tweeted a side-by-side -side comparison of RG3 before and during the press conference. I've seen and I've posted it on my channel. It goes on, following the unusual appearance, questions arose as to why the outspoken Christian athlete would turn his t-shirt inside out. Later that day, Richmond Times-Dispatch reporter Michael Phillips offered an explanation for the incident, implying that RG3's shirt was not a Nike product and therefore is, was banned from public appearance. Furthermore, RG3 has been fined in the past for wearing non-Nike apparel. This is ridiculous. That, that, that is an absolute and total cop-out. And if it's not a cop-out, since when are you allowed to sign away somebody's entire freedom of expression? I don't remember ever reading that the NFL had the right to do that. Mike Ditka with a little bit of reasoning here. What's all the stink about the Redskins name? It's so much expletive. It's incredible. We're going to let the liberals of the world run this world. It was said out of reverence, out of pride for the American Indian. Oh, you didn't know that, did you? You thought it was all about hating the red skin, right? Even though he's called a red skin, what are you going to call them, a brown skin? This is so stupid, it's appalling, and I hope that owners keep fighting for it and never change the name, because the Redskins are part of an American football history, and it should never be anything but the Washington Redskins. That's the way it is, and I agree very much. I really do. We, 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 we can't have Christians with a Christian t-shirt on at a press conference, but we can have, and I'm not against Sam being gay, but the moment he got cut, it mentions this in the article, it was, how can we make sure he gets signed? How can we make sure this carries on for him? On and on and on, but nothing, you know, if, if, the, if a Christian, if a Christian goes ahead and gets banned or gets cut, is anybody going to try to make sure that he gets signed? Is anybody going to care about him? Isn't that quite a question? 
Friends, we got uh, another one here. Truth Revolt, atheist group urging Americans to boycott the Pledge of Allegiance until under God is removed. Now, for one thing, the common sense in this tells you it's not going to work because the people that have already um, pledged one nation under God, they're not going to say it without that pledge because you have to remember, of course, they have taken, let's say it together, a pledge. So you have to remember that right off the cuff. You, you, you can't take under God away from people that have already taken a pledge under God. That's not going to work. Second of all, this is ridiculous. It was added for a reason. The founders believed in it. And if you don't want to say the pledge, then you don't have to say the pledge. Nobody is going to make you say the pledge. But in this, this BS of trying to get everyone alive to capitulate to what you want and to get God eliminated from this and God eliminated from that. Let me tell you what. People are sick of it. Okay, We are absolutely sick of it in every possible way to the point where we're not going to take it anymore. And that's why I'm out here reporting on this. If you wonder what I'm typing while I'm reporting, Google keeps knocking my poor live listeners offline on me here. All right, friends, uh, listen to this utter BS from these boneheads. An atheist organization called the American Humanist Association, AHA, sounds like a certain word, doesn't it, launched a national campaign bent on encouraging Americans to sit out to the Pledge of Allegiance until the words under God are removed from it. Well, why don't you just stay sitting? Called Don't Say the Pledge, the campaign urges people, regardless of their beliefs, to sit down during the pledge and make a statement of true inclusiveness. No, maybe we should just exclude you. Before 1954, they whine, the pledge affirmed that we were one nation indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Indivisible means that we can rise against our differences, religious or otherwise. In other words, they're trying very hard to say that the original writing didn't have any uh, legitimacy to it. And as proof of their validity of their stance, the group points out the study from the Sidewitz group, commissioned by the American Humanist Association, the AHAs, with support from the Stifle Free Thought Foundation, reports that 34% of Americans support removing under gods from the pledge. Well, I think 34 Americans should be allowed to sit there with their hands folded and deal with us saying the pledge the way it needs to be said. Um, they're going to go after the Declaration of Independence next. And it says a more obvious reason that uh, a hey question was constructed, it seems to publish the respondent with the desired answer. So they're asking people, question, for the first 62 years, the Pledge of Allegiance did not include the phrase under God. During the Cold War in 54, the phrase one nation indivisible was changed to read one nation under God indivisible. Some people feel that this phrase is our national pledge should focus on unity rather than religion. Do you believe that the pledge should be returned to the unchanged version or continue with the changed version? In other words, they're making it sound as if it was done for no reason. Remember the communists, the Stalin, and Stalin killed more people than Hitler. Uh, Mao, another one, another Hitler. Anti-God, anti-this, anti-this. North Korea, a communist nation, is putting people in prison for leaving Bibles behind. The idea of one nation under God solidified us being different from the nations that do not even allow the acknowledgement of God. So everything that they're relying on here is just ridiculous. I mean, as an argument, it makes no sense at all. And while we're on the topic of things that don't make any sense, Paul Joseph Watson, Prison Planet, writes, those Ukrainians that John McCain wants to arm include neo-Nazis. That's right. After vehemently pushing to arm extremist militants in Syria, Senator John McCain, who could have become the president of the U.S., is now calling on Washington to give weapons to Ukrainian forces that include ultra-right wing neo-Nazis. During an appearance on CBS Face the Nation, McCain was asked if the introduction of more weapons to the region would improve or worsen the situation. The senator responded, for God's sake, can't we help those people defend themselves? This is not an incursion, this is an invasion, with McCain adding that Russia had committed an act of war. 
Haven't we learned anything from the plethora of weapons that were stolen from us by ISIS when we sent them weapons? No, not a thing. In a conflict that requires our participation not through American ground troops, but our participation and our help and our leadership, and that is what seems to be missing, asserted McCain added, give them the weapons they need, give them the wherewithal they need, give them the ability to fight give them the ability to become Hitler's. Listen to this. Democratic Robert Mendez, ahead of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, also told CNN that we should provide the Ukrainians with the type of defensive weapons that will impose a cost upon Putin for further aggression. Longtime listeners know that this show is no fan of Putin, but this is their issue. And we also know if the Ukrainians cannot decide that they don't want to be Russian, they don't want to be in the European Union. They want to be Ukrainians. Ukrainian, not Russian, not European, Ukrainian. If they can't decide that, then why do we have any sympathy for them to begin with? Lead yourself or shut up and quit complaining about your leaders. Rogers also wants it done, but this is what's great. McCain's rhetoric about Libya collapsing into a failed state due to a lack of prolonged U.S. intervention is also a stunning piece of gymnastics, given that the Obama administration policy to fund an armed radical jihadist in Libya in an effort to overthrow Gaddafi led directly to the country being overtaken by warlords and jihadists, many of whom have crossed into Syria. Let's pause. The correct views gives news for people that aren't always on it, if you're new to the topic. Leave a comment, please do. We went into Libya and got rid of Gaddafi because he wouldn't join the banking cartels that we wanted him to join. Was Gaddafi a good man? Not really, but he was very, very good at what he did where he did it. The Sunnis, the Shiites, the Christians, they all at least got along when he was there. Now it's, it's, it's a hellhole. And a lot of the weapons that were given to the people to defeat Libya for no reason whatsoever... A lot of those weapons went into the hands of ISIS and the child killers and the woman rapists and the head cut, neck cutters, head cutters that are killing people en masse. They later crossed from Syria with weapons that we sent there. McCain's call to arm Ukrainian forces would see weapons transferred directly into the hands of foreign pol what Foreign Policy magazine calls fascist defenders of freedom, including Azov Battalion, an openly neo-Nazi unit that has suddenly found itself defending the city against what Ukrainian President Petro Poshenko called a Russian invasion. After once being derided as Kremlin propaganda, it is a fact that neo-Nazis are openly aligned and fighting alongside the NATO-backed regime in Kyiv is now brazenly admitted. Thank you, Christelle. Thirsty, my friends. Um, it's been admitted openly. So McCain wants to send money to a group of people to defeat Russia who are fascist-minded. Okay. Isn't that what we did against Russia the last time when we funded the Mujahideen, when we funded what later became Al-Qaeda, who we are being told is solely responsible for flying planes into the World Trade Center. We funded the Afghans to defeat Russia, and the Afghans are now fighting us with that money and that weaponry. So McCain now wants to fund Nazis, who are very much like uh, uh, ISIS, just uh, different different beliefs, same structure of belief, same fascism. He wants to fund Nazis so that we can make the same mistake in the Ukraine that we made in Afghanistan. He has to be one of the dumbest human beings who's ever lived. Friends, if you're listening to the correct views. Don't go away. I've still got three stories to get to. And I want to let you know that if you go to Cedar Point, I'm, gonna, I'm hoping to go this weekend. The haunted houses are calling my name. Come to me. Well, you're going to want to go to them. And there's 14, 15 coasters there. You're going to want to go. And then when you get there, you're going to want to go for two days because it's actually cheaper to do it that way. And you're going to find out that the hotel rooms go from $127 to upwards $600 to stay, depending on where you stay at. Or you can go to the Seacrest Motel less than a mile and a half, two miles away from the park. 
Tell Vicky who's going to take your call is that Sam from The Correct Views sent you, TCV. You're going to get a great room. You're going to get a really, really nice, affordable place to stay. A comfy bed, full tub. You're going to get it for a fraction of that. You're going to get it even cheaper when you tell Vicky that you heard about it from TCV. I want to give a shout out to the Arcadia Grill who makes delicious food every time they make food. If you're in Canton, Ohio, or if you're anywhere even near it, I suggest giving that place a shot. You will not be disappointed in the food that you get there. Friends, as we're talking about food, they have great food at the Arcadia Grill, and Nestle has poisonous food. And Nestle removes GMO ingredients from baby foods in South Africa, but not the USA. So the company actively ignores requests of U.S. consumers. If you don't know, these are the chemicals that give you poison, and uh, these are the chemicals that give you cancer, heart disease. These are things that make you and your family and your baby and your loved ones very, very sick. It doesn't always kill them. It makes them sick and sick and sick, and then it kills them. Why is Nestle, who owns a baby formula producing company called Gerber, why have they removed GMOs from baby foods and formulas that would be genetically modified organisms in South Africa, but not in the United States? Perhaps because South African parents are more vocal than American. Or it might also be because corporations conducting business in the U.S. are protected by government agencies who don't seem to give a hoot about public health, and not even our most fragile citizens, maybe it's time we speak out for the sake of children's health. Nestle has gone on record stating, quote, it took consumer preferences into consideration, and therefore all of its infant cereals in South Africa <clears throat> used non-GMO maize, according to GM Watch. Last year, the African Center for Biosafety found that Nestle's Cyrillic honey contains 77.65% genetically modified maize. The same group also conducted independent and accelerated lab tests on seven baby formulas and cereals, finding that purity brands contained extremely high levels of GMOs, and it seems unlikely that they are close to anything pure. Supposedly, purity brands has now gone GMO-free, it says. But it says Nestle is the company of Abbott Laboratories, maker of Similac. How do you fight against this? You don't invest in Similac. You don't invest in Abbott Industries. Me, Johnson Nutrition, makers of Infamil, you don't invest in that. Who are also exposing American and Canadian babies to unhealthy and understudied GMOs. The top selling formulas of these companies, which combined for 90% of the formula sales in the U.S., contained corn, sugar, or soy, all ingredients which are highly likely to be genetically engineered. So if you want to put cancer into your baby, continue to give them these foods. Otherwise, you can fight. And it says that these country, com companies have contributed tons of money towards things that hide what's in your food. And they're all about this non-labeling bill so that you won't know what you eat. One more food topic. This is frightening because it shows a can of Chunky's food, a Chunky's uh, old-fashioned vegetable beef and chicken noodle. I, I like Chunky's, but I'll be avoiding it like the plague after this. I knew what I was about to say here. I knew it was bad. I've reported on it prior, but it's much worse than we knew. There is a 1,000-fold increase. That is 10 100s for you Kesha fans. In toxic exposure when using canned products. So that would not just be Campbell's. This is from April McCarthy at InfoWars. Consuming a daily serving of canned food products has more than 1,000% increase in urinary bisphenol A concentrations compared with when the same individuals consumed fresh food daily. So what does bisphenol A do that it's 1,000 times more toxic? Exactly what does it do? Let me tell you what it does, friends. It leads to cancer. Previous studies have linked elevated BPA, BPA levels to all kinds of terrible effects. Um, they know that it can lead to homosexuality by messing up the hormones in young boys. They know that it leads to a huge problem in ADD. And certain plastics leach it. Also, you need to avoid anything at all uh, that is like a receipt. Do you know receipt paper has tons of this on it? 
It says, buy Whole Foods, carry your food home in paper bags. Do not microwave in plastics. Always use ceramic or uh, glass if you must microwave. That could be dangerous. Consider switching to French press coffee makers. Typical coffee makers contain BPA where the coffee filter goes. Get rid of any canned foods unless they are Eden Foods, Vital Choice, and Oregon's Choice, or Trident Seafoods. None of them use BPAs in it. Uh, keep BPAs away from kids and avoid cash register ticker tape. Um, there's a scientist from Yale University who's been leading the charge on this named Hugh Taylor. He tells his pregnant patients to avoid products containing it. Even a fleeting exposure in pregnancy can cause lasting damage, not going away damage. So there you go, friends. I'm giving you the news. You know what you have to do with it. I think this data card's going to fill up, so I'm going to do this quickly. Adam Salins, our prison planet. The dumb of the day story is here. School cops brutalized teen girl over cell phone. This is ridiculous. This is the dumbest thing I've heard of the day, and it wins the dumb of the day. A Houston, Texas teen has decided to leave her current high school after school police arrested and responded aggressively to her defiant use of a cell phone. Campus police were summoned to the Sam Houston High School on Tuesday to deal with a 10th grade student, Excel Perez. When the 70-pound student, 70 pounds, refused to relinquish the phone, three officers reportedly wrestled her to the ground. Another officer pinned her head to the floor with his knee. Footage of part of the altercation was obtained by KHOU.com, and it was captured by another student. It says, I didn't want to give you my phone, Perez explained to KHOU, adding that she had been on the phone with her ill mother, trying to get the status of her update condition. She asked me for the phone, and I didn't want to give it to her because I was scared. I ended up walking down the stairs trying to get away from the assistant principal, and they had already called the cops. So the cops came because a girl was checking on her sick mother, and then had her beat to the floor, and her head bounced off the ground like a pumpkin. Sam Houston High School did this, so you can leave something on their Facebook letting them know how wonderful they are. They had the audacity to say that the safety of their students at Sam Houston High School and all of their high schools is their absolute top priority. Uh, the Heisted Police Department and the school's administration are continuing to investigate. No, you do not investigate a girl checking on her sick mother and then bashing her head into the ground. You fire the cops and you settle out of court before she owns your school. That's a correct view. And friends, you're listening to The Correct View. Sam I.B. DeGange reporting for the Media Speaks and signing off. You can donate to the show, which is a huge help to me, so please do it. The Correct Views at Hotmail.com. Every penny you give me goes towards a better show. Good night, friends. God bless.